So shortly we're going to have our speakers to introduce them is Sarah Good. He was actually going to say the one and only, but he gave up on that one. Um, I'm Sarah. I'm one of the junior high leaders at Newport. Um, so this whole service, I've just been like, I'm like a mom today for these junior hires. I'm like, oh, my children, they're out there. It's so much fun. Um, but yeah, I've just been really proud of them all stepping out and things. Some of them, they've never been on the worship team. So it's really cool just to see them leading and stepping out in places that they might not feel comfortable in. Um, so keeping with the theme of stepping out, our sermon today is a little non-traditional. Um, it's going to be pretty anonymous. Um, so we're going to have students just sharing about their experiences with stepping out or standing up in their faith or doing things that they weren't comfortable with or, or having situations that someone didn't step up for them. Um, so we're going to have a bit of a time of vulnerability. Um, so obviously this is really a hard topic to talk about. So we're really proud of the students that had the courage to step out and um, speak in front of the church. So I'm just going to take a quick few seconds to pray and then I think we'll be ready to go. All right. Dear Lord, we just thank you um, for what you've been doing today and the opportunity for us to praise you freely um, of all ages, God. And we just pray that the youth today would be filled with peace and courage as they're sharing. Um, and I pray the words coming out of their mouths, God, would be God-breathed um, and they'd speak to us all today. So again, thank you for all the youth and just your glory, God, that we have the chance to experience. In Jesus' name, amen. After the referee gave me a technical by mistaking my frustrations for disrespect, my coach stood up for me. She called a timeout to confront the ref as a gesture of her support for me. This surprised me because that year had been a very difficult basketball season. Even after she stood up for me, there were many instances that I had to overcome by walking in forgiveness towards the coach. In Matthew 5.44, it states, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Every time my coach would say or do something to hurt me or my teammates, I would pray for her and ask God to bless her. God started to change my perspective on her in a way that I could never see before. My hatred towards her had turned into compassion. This allowed me to grow a deeper and closer relationship with a coach that I once had no respect for. The following year, I got news that she was fired as head coach. My team and I were shocked when we first heard the news. I felt like God was telling me it was my turn to stand up for her. I sent a message out to my team asking if anyone would want to join me in addressing the principal on my coach's behalf. Even though, co even though confronting the school's administration did not change the outcome of the situation, I felt like I was able to walk in obedience because I had learned how to walk in forgiveness. The lesson that I learned was forgiveness allows me to see people through God's eyes instead of my own. Who's next? Wait. Outreaching has always been hard for me. Well, one day we were doing a Halloween outreach and I stepped completely out of my comfort zone. I walked up to a complete stranger. I did not know him whatsoever. I asked him if he would like a Bible. He said yes. That day was amazing for me. I really just haven't been outreaching a lot. I'm trying to do better. <sighs> yeah. So about two months ago, I was involved in a production, a musical production through a uh, homeschool, I guess, homeschool company uh, that I had been a part of the year previous. This show was different than anything that we had ever done before because it touched on topics that were really, really hard and really cut deep into the hearts of people around it. Topics like suicide, anxiety, and depression were one of the main things that we went over. We knew that this show was going to be very impactful for people and really spread the message of Jesus. But because of that, we knew that we were going to get attacked a lot. But I didn't expect the level of attacks that we felt. Opening day, 
people were just getting attacked left and right by problems from home trying to distract us from what we wanted to do. Instantly, they were surrounded with prayer, and people who were complete strangers only a few months ago were just being wrapped in, in prayer by them. I was trying my best to help people along and to try and pray for them and encourage them. But right before the curtain went up for the second show, I myself felt another personal attack. Stuff from my past be kept being br brought up in my mind, and I just broke down. It was a few seconds before the curtain went up, and I was just instantly surrounded with prayer. People stood up for me in prayer and just filled me again with this, this energy and the courage to just go on and do this show. And it turned out to be one of the best experiences of my life so far. I have always uh, had a problem with praying for people that I didn't really know well. So um, a couple of months before we left for, well, before we moved, I went to a home group with my parents, as usual, and decided to join the adults for once. H about halfway through, uh, the men and women went in separate rooms and started doing prayer requests. We had all given our prayer request when um, suddenly this little voice said, hey, why don't you go pray for that woman over there? My first thoughts were, what in the world? No way. <laughs> but uh, it kept on nagging me, so I went over and I prayed. By the end of the home cell group, I had prayed for every woman in that room. That was a great time for me, and I just like was like, whoa, how did this happen? And, and that's it. As many of you know, I play volleyball and love the sport. No matter how many bruises I get, I still go back on the court and play. For my club team, however, my dad and I started a team, and we have found another co great coach to help us out with the whole thing. Most of the girls on my team go to church, but there are a few that don't. Through the years, I have seen the ones who don't go to church feel more comfortable when, they pr when we pray at practice, and this year they started to share prayer requests as well. That was just so encouraging to see and experience. This just shows how standing up and stepping out can influence and have an impact on those around you. Another cool thing that happened this year is that I got to be a main part with one of our other teammates. Her mom was diagnosed with ALS a year ago, and the symptoms, symptoms are progressing fast. It is so hard to watch a friend you know go through this. It had really opened my eyes for how much people these days take having a mom and dad for granted. We went for, brec for breakfast. We were just talking about life, and what most girls talk about is boys. And then I asked how she was doing with her mom, and she said, not too good. And then we kept talking, and she hit me with this. Sierra, it's really hard right now. Your mom and dad will be there at your last volleyball tournament. Mine won't. Your mom and dad will be at your graduation. Mine won't. Your mom and dad will be at your wedding. And mine won't. This is when it really hit me, when we take these things for granted, when I realized how I needed to start to step up and stand out to her. I needed to become that friend that can share anything with and can cry with me whenever. I later learned that she doesn't share these kinds of things with others, but she shared them with me. I was so grateful she shared them with me and that she took that one step to share with someone so she wasn't holding it all inside. I really encourage you today to step out and be there for your friends who are going through a rough time. They appreciate it, and it isn't only good for them, but it's life-changing for you too. So on a lighter note, my favorite color is green. And I just thought you should all know that because favorite colors are fun. <laughs> that doesn't relate to anything I'm about to say. <laughs> um, so <laughs> um, this past year at the Winter Youth Retreat, uh, we, had a, we had a really great session where um, a speaker talked about how God has a name individually for each of us. 
Um, so we had a time where we just sat quietly and listened to God. Um, and I heard the name Prayer Warrior. Um, so fast forward to the end of the weekend, then we were sharing testimonies at the end. And there were a lot of great testimonies about how people had heard names for them, and it was really encouraging. And then I was asked to pray to wrap up everything, um, and partially because of what I had heard. Um, so I, as I was praying, I kind of felt like I should also pray for those of us who hadn't heard names during that quiet time, um, just so that they wouldn't be discouraged because everyone, because a lot of other people had. Um, so I didn't, so I prayed for that, and I prayed that they would be able to push in and hear those names later from God after they went home from the retreat. And so I prayed for that, and I didn't think about it a ton afterwards. Um, but then after, um, after we had, like, gone into free time then, someone, there was a girl who came up to me, and she just thanked me for praying that, and she said, she told me how she was really touched that I had done that um, because she hadn't heard anything from God and it, I, and she was feeling really discouraged from that. So it was a little thing, but it just showed me how um, even the little things and like just stepping out and what God calls us to can really make a difference to someone. So, my stepping out in faith is actually doing this, because they just asked me. <sighs> okay, so, uh, this is supposed to be anonymous, but a small thing happened in my life, like about a year ago, I kind of moved to Alabama, and uh, this, uh, when we moved, it, it, was, it was like, okay, this will be cool, let's just do it, and we did it. So when we did it, I realized, hey, I don't have any friends out here. That kind of sucks. And uh, so pretty much I was like for three months, I was by myself. I didn't do much. I only went to the gym, drank protein shakes, and slept. And uh, so that's what I did for about three months. And then like I used to, I went to church. My parents made me go to church. And then so... There's this new church. It's pretty cool. I didn't really meet anyone for the first three months, and it was kind of like a bummer. And then I realized, you know, I'm going to be living here for a long time. I might as well make something of it. And I went to church. I actually started talking to people. I joined the youth group, and I realized this, this is actually kind of cool. And uh, I applied to college there. I went to University of North Alabama, and I, like, it's hard to make friends because nobody comes up to you so I had to find actual like find my courage to go up and actually talk to people which kind of sucks because like I'm naturally an introvert but hey <laughs> I'm talking okay so <laughs> So it was really tough for me because, like, it was a bunch of college students, and I was 17 at the time when I was in college because, you know, I graduated yearly. That's not the point. But, like, it, it was really tough for me because I had to meet a bunch of new friends. I had to actually work for it. And I think in the process, like, I was really worried about everything because I didn't know where my life was going. But then pretty much through, like, youth group and everything, I met a bunch of really cool people, and they, like, really helped me through that, and I think my faith really did grow a lot through it, because I actually started praying a lot more, and, like, a lot of my worries just kind of went away after a while, and I just, I felt a lot more happy. It was just, it just turned out great. Um, so I started playing soccer when I was nine years old and fell in love with the sport. I fell in love with soccer because it's a team sport that requires strategic thinking and quick decision making. 
However, when I entered the se soccer season of my freshman year, that love to play came to a halt. The coach of the team at the time was psychologically abusive. He created an environment of fear, shame, control, and isolation, and would regularly play mind games that divide the team. As the season began, we discovered that this coach had a select few that he seemingly detested and would ridicule, shame, and isolate them throughout the season. And I was one of these girls. Many nights, I came home in tears or feeling in anger over how he treated myself and my teammates. I began to hate soccer, dreading every practice and wanting to quit. But my parents said that I couldn't because I had made a commitment and it would be worse for me to quit halfway through the season, allowing the coach to further harm my reputation. Near the end of the season, the coach made us fill out an evaluation for him to look at. He stated that if we gave him a bad score, we didn't have to sign our names, but to not sign our names would be the coward's way out. I was honest, and I gave him a bad score, and then I signed my name. But it was hard to do so, because I felt like I was alone in this. The next day, he pulled me aside at practice and confronted me about my evaluation. I explained to him how I felt his behavior was hurting my teammates, myself, and the team as a whole. However, in the weeks that followed, nothing changed. This felt like confirmation that we needed to go to administration because girls would continue to be hurt if nothing was done. We asked people from church to pray, and my mom asked me to start documenting the coach's behavior so that, we went to, so that when we met to administration, we would be prepared. After meeting with the administration and telling them everything that was occurring, the administration met with the coach, and he chose to retire from coaching in our school. However, going to administration was hard because there were a couple of players who were very loyal to the coach and wanted to let, them know, let him know who had reported him. But by standing up and sharing the truth about the situation, we now have a new coach who has created a safe environment and who cares about his players. And then by going through the situation, I've been able to grow in my willingness to stand up for what is right despite opposition. All right, so back in ninth grade, um, well, obviously I entered high school, um, so I was getting real, uh, really bullied, and and this past year, uh, when our first semester was ending, I was just just getting real tired of the crap I was going through, and I just asked God, like, why, why me, you know, and like, so he just gave me a lot of strength to stand up for myself, um, and be able to speak with my bully, like, what I was feeling, what he was feeling, and why he was doing it. Um, so, yeah, it was, yeah. So God is great. Um, so another another thing is a couple, I guess a bit, about a month ago, I was at my cousin's um, 16th birthday. I was sitting around the fire, and it was getting pretty dark out. Times were dwindling away um and my cousin we were sitting around the fire we were my cousin and I um just had this real good talk about our faults and fail um faults and failures um so yeah it was just really good to see God um be able to speak with my cousin and lead us both on the right path to follow him All right, that's all we have for you guys today. Thanks for coming out. Um, it's Mother's Day, so go spend time with your mothers. And uh, we're going to have a prayer team up front, so come forward if you need prayer. And the rest of you, you're dismissed.